Okay, my beloveds. So, uh, question, misunderstood question so far your, from your big exams that confused you about vaginal bleeding. So, take your pens, papers, and let's go. <coughs> to make the notes, of course. So, remember, huh? so, bleeding is common vaginal bleeding, but never normal. So vaginal bleeding occurs in the, no, if you remember the, the, the numbers, if you, vaginal bleeding is quite common situation, occurs in approximately 20-30% of pregnancies, particularly in the first trimester, but clinical importance, clinical issue of that. While relatively common, unfortunately, any bleeding during pregnancy should be considered abnormal, period. Uh, nevertheless, until proven otherwise. So it's a pathology until proven otherwise. It mandates prompt evaluation to determine the cause and rule out serious complications. And the patient needs to be told this and her husband, of course. First trimester bleeding, wide range of etiologies. So you have to remember that. The causes of first trimester bleeding are diverse, including, so you will be asked about that. No well, implantation bleeding, light, uh, light spotting when the fertilized egg implants in the uterine lining means around 6-12 days after conception. This often self-limiting. Then subchorionic hemorrhage. Subchorionic hemorrhage, a collection of blood between the chorion outer membrane surrounding the embryo and the uterine wall. Ectopic pregnancy. Uh, implantation of the fertilized egg outside the uterus, most commonly the fallopian tube. Miscarriage. Spontaneous uh, abortion. Pregnancy loss before 20 weeks of gestation. This includes threatened abortion threatened abortion, inevitable abortion, uh, incomplete abortion, missed abortion, and septic abortion. Gestational trophoblastic disease, GTD, uh, abnormal growth of trophoblastic cells, cells that normally develop into the placenta, such as a male molar pregnancy, cervical or vaginal lesions, polyps infections, for example, cervicitis or trauma. Clinical importance. The differential diagnosis is broad. A thorough history, phys phys uh, physical exam, including speculum exam, quantitative beta HCG levels, and transvaginal ultrasound are crucial to narrow down the possibilities and guide management. What about beta HCG? Beta HCG patterns are informative. Uh, beta HCG, that is hu hu uh, human chorionic gonadotropin, is a hormone produced during pregnancy. Its level typically doubles every 48, 72 hours in early pregnancy. That's why we check up, check up pregnancy by that. So clinical importance. Ectopic pregnancy suspicion. If beta HCG levels are lower than expected for gestational age or fail to double Appropriately, ectopic pregnancy is a strong consideration. Levels plateauing or decreasing also suggest a, a non-viable pregnancy. Following miscarriage management, beta HCG levels are followed to ensure complete expulsion of pregnancy tissue, particularly after medica medi medical or surgical management of miscarriage. Persistent elevated levels can indicate retained products of conception or rarely gestational trophoblastic disease. Actually, about discriminating zone, the beta HCG level in which a gestational uh, sac should be visible on transvaginal ultrasound, usually around 100, uh, 1,500 1, up to 2,000. Uh, if the level is above, above this and no intrauterine pregnancy is seen, ectopic pregnancy becomes highly likely. 
Then ectopic pregnancy, so a time-sensitive emergency. Ectopic pregnancy is a leading cause of maternal mortality in the first trimester. Rupture of an ectopic pregnancy can lead to severe hemorrhage and shock. Clinical issue. Early diagnosis and treatment are paramount. Symptom of this ectopic pregnancy. Consider ectopic pregnancy in any woman of reproductive age with abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding and a positive pregnancy test. Shoulder tip pain may be a sign of diaphragmatic irritation from intraperitoneal bleeding. About management, actually, <clears throat> by the grace of God, we will talk about that. Treatment options include methotrexate, a medication that stops the growth of the ectopic pregnancy used in stable patients with specific criteria. Surgical management, salpingoectomy or salpingo, salpingostomy, removal or incision of the fallopian tube, respectively, for unstable patients or those not eligible for, for methotrexate. Resostatus, resus negative women and ectopic pregnancy should be received. Resus immunoglobulin. Second and third trimester bleeding. Placental issues predominate. Bleeding in the second and third trimester is more often related to placental abnormalities. Obviously. What is clinical importance? Key causes include, and we will talk actually, placenta previa, previ placenta covers the cervix ox opening, presents with a presence with painless vaginal bleeding, often bright red. Placental abru abruption, premature separation of the placental from the uterine wall, presents with painful vaginal bleeding, through bleeding may be concealed. Ah, sorry, dow bleeding may be concealed. Sorry, huh? sorry, dow bleeding may be concealed. What's happened to me? Abdominal pain, uterine tenderness, and possible fetal distress. Vasa previa, fetal blood vessels run unprotected through the membranes over the cervical os. Rare, but carries a high risk of fetal ex ex -sangu ex exsanguination, exsanguination in the membranes rupture, uterine rupture, a tear in the wall of the uterus, most commonly women with a prior caesarean delivery, uh, preterm labor, uh, bleeding often mixed with mucus, so-called bloody show, can be a sign of impending preterm labor. Placenta previa, ah, remember, no digital exam, so you will be asked about that. Digital examination of the cervix in a patient with suspected placenta previa is contraindicated. The clinical issue of that, the palpation of the placenta through the cervix can cause severe bleeding. Diagnosis is best made via transabdominal ultrasound. And if needed, if needed only, confirmed with transvaginal ultrasound, if needed. And very good technician, of course, we have. And with staff around. Placental abruption, risk factors and fetal monitoring. Risk factors for placental abruption include hypertension, preeclampsia, trauma, for example, motor vehicle accident, uh, cocaine, street drugs use, unfortunately, very often now, smoking, multiple gestation, and prior abruption. Clinical importance. Continuous fetal monitoring is essential to assess fetal well-being. Management depends on the severity of the abruption and gestational age. Delivery may be indicated, even if preterm, if there is an evidence of fetal distress or maternal disability. Uh, in, uh, instability. Disability. Instability. So delivery may be indicated even if preterm, if there is an evidence of fetal distress or maternal instability. Vasa previa. So attentional diagnosis is a key. Vasa previa is often diagnosed antenatally with a targeted ultrasound to check placental location and vessel course. You can say, what is clinical issue of that? If diagnosed antenatally, planned caesarean delivery before the onset of labor significantly improves fetal outcomes. About rhesus. Uh, rhesus negative women who experience vaginal bleeding during pregnancy are at risk of rhesus sensitization 
if their fetus is rhesus positive. Clinical importance. Rhesus immunoglobulin, rho GAM, rho GAM, rhesus immunoglobulin, should be administered to rhesus negative pregnant women who experience bleeding, ectopic pregnancy, miscarriage or other procedures that could potentially cause fetal maternal hemorrhage. The dose depends on the gestational age and amount of fetal blood exposure. And actually, always the problem with the name of the test, Clayhauer Betke test. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Clayhauer Betke test, if I'm pronounced not correctly. So this test can quantify the amount of fetal blood in the maternal circulation and guide the appropriate rhesus immunoglobulin dose if there is a uh, significant hemorrhage. And about com communication and emotional support, of course, my beloved, vaginal bleeding in pregnancy can be can be incredibly anxiety provoking for patients. What is clinical importance? Empathy and reassurance. Approach patients with empathy and provide clear and honest information and to uh, and to husband as well about the possible causes of the bleeding and the evaluation process and the management plan. Uh, talk about that. Psychological support. Recognize the emotional toll of pregnancy complications and offer res and offer uh, resources for psychological support, especially in cases of miscarriage or pregnancy loss. Involve the patient's support system and first and principal is the husband, of course. But be honest. Share decision making, so called. Involve the patient in decision making and her husband regarding their care when appropriate. No, I suppose uh, largely sufficient. So actually all these questions that was misunderstood, that were misunderstood, I tried to clarify, I suppose I clarified them. No misunderstood, confused questions. So my beloved, thanks for your attention. Don't forget to follow and subscribe my Dr. Y YouTube channel. Ah, yes, and don't forget to follow and subscribe my Telegram channel, Dr. Y. It's a private channel. Doctor Y, Doctor, you tap in searching mode in Telegram. Doctor W H Y without question mark. Doctor Y, it's me. Doctor, like question. Doctor W H Y, you find uh, you find the the boat. It's a boat. You click start. You choose your plan. It's not cool. It's very cheapy. And we will talk. You will find a lot of questions like this. MCQ tests, questions, answers, explanations. Students cheat sheets, uh, what else? A lot of uh, presents, why not? Gifts, etc., etc., etc. So, see you on my Dr. Y private Telegram channel. Bye bye.